Good, so, so let's see, are there any questions about what we just talked about? Is something you want to ask a question or before we continue? Um, in in my, uh, my practice, my patients are usually totally on board with whatever I choose, but in the larger community, specifically the medical community, there's some uh, question as to the value of um, uh, going back in time uh, rather than more recent, a la Western medicine. and. My question to you is, um, how do you respond? I, I heard your analogy about the ice. Uh, basically, you're saying it's time tested. Um, but if Zhang Zhongjing happened uh, slightly, maybe 200 years later than the Neijing, if I'm correct, I, I don't yeah. know. Okay. Uh, obviously, there is um, at least a 200 span uh, window of growth, evolution, and um, uh, bringing together of all of these different factors into a, um, a classic that we revere to today. Uh, why is that, why did time stop then? Or, or why is it that um, we cannot uh, find a practitioner today uh, promoting uh, some sort of synthesis of all of these theories uh, and find equal value, if not uh, greater value? Right. Well, I think, um I think it's, I mean, this is going to sound really new agey, and I try to not ever use that kind of terms, but it's kind of a change in consciousness. It's kind of a change in, I think that the way they used to think in the early, early times was much more on a kind of from a synthesis perspective, like a synthesizing perspective, like being able to process vast amounts of information, but not process them in a very linear, cerebral way, but just kind of going with that, it, the, the overall impression, and then out of that deriving some type of actionable uh, guideline uh, for, for, ac for action, for practice. Um, you know, but slowly, slowly that's kind of been surplaced by um, needing to weed out as many variables as possible because we can no longer cope with too many variables because now our minds are too much geared towards strict, accurate, um, uh, exact things. And because if you've got too many variables in the picture, then the overall picture is less exact. It's a bit more, you know, diffuse and less sharp. And, and I think the current consciousness of the human being has great uh, difficulty accepting that. Like it, it creates tremendous amount of anxiety to treat, to have to deal with multiple variables and not having a full grasp to the ultimate accuracy of the umph degree not having that kind of accuracy gives us a lot of anxiety in, in nowadays, you know, like we want to really be certain, certain, certain. It's like Western medicine, for example, they, they'll do tests to just to know for sure what's going on, even if that is not a guide for treatment, even if they don't necessarily have a particular treatment, but they just need to know. In the old days, take the pulse, yeah, this kind of feels like you have a tumor. Where is it? Doesn't really matter that much. You have a tumor, we treat it as a tumor, and wherever it is, we, we will rectify the imbalance that the pulse says you have. And we trust that as we rectify the imbalance that the pulse says you have, as the tumor is part of that imbalance, then that will be beneficial for you getting rid of that tumor. Whether we need the ultimate amount of information as to how big and where exactly and, and what is the nature and what is the type of cell we're dealing with, that, was, that wasn't the, 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 their subject of research. That wasn't really, they didn't need that kind of information. They needed information on a totally different level to work with. So I think there's a change of our, of our consciousness that has happened. And um, because of that, the old ways of thinking are greatly disconcerting to us now. Uh, they are in anxi anxiety inducing. And, and we need some type of con sense of control. And, and, and the, 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 the primary mindset for it to become a classical practitioner is you have to be extremely comfortable with uncertainty. You have to be extremely comfortable with chaos. If you're not able to get comfortable with it, you, it's not going to be good for you. You're going to go to clinic and you're going to feel really, really anxious and upset and, and uncomfortable and it's, it's not good, right? Uh, if, you, if you cannot deal with uncertainty and with things being maybe this, maybe that, then Western medicine is really the way to go for you as a student too. Uh, because 
you are able to get ultimate certainty in Western medicine. Still, it's relative. You know, the, the, a Western doctor will agree that actually they also have not a whole lot of certainty. But at least they have imaging, and it's more palpable and quantifiable and things like that, rather than our, our stuff is just on a qualitative level, not a quantitative level. So I often use the following analogy. I, like I said, it's kind of a little new agey, and I normally don't talk like this. But it is all, not nevertheless a little bit like that. We, my teacher, who I have two people who have influenced me tremendously, uh, uh, and I'm you know, I'm very traditional in the mindset that I. One day a teacher, a lifetime as a father. You know the story, the, the Chinese saying. You know, um, if if a person is one day your teacher, you will honor him as a father your whole life. And I've always done that with all my teachers. Uh, some people have left a much deeper impression, have become much more pivotal in my own development of, of my skill and uh, everything. But there's two people who have tremendously influenced me. One is Dr. Zheng Rongxiu, who's the Shanghalun guy outside of the university system. He just he couldn't explain it to save his life, but he really knew how to do it, right? And he taught me di false diagnosis and, and allowed me to be also become part of this lineage that he represents. It's a family lineage. And then there's this other guy in the university who's the it's Christ Antichrist thing. Like he's the ultimate eclectic practitioner, Dr. Deng Zongjia. He he's a super uh, academic, you know, all about research, all about eclectic. Uh, all the you know, he he's the guy who edited the, the formula, the chief editor of the formula textbooks for the national curriculum in China. Top of his field in formulas. He was my master's and my doctoral advisor. Uh, so I was with him for seven years total in China, you know, in the university, doing research, teaching me how to think on scientific thinking, you know, that kind of stuff. Tremendously deep inf uh, impact on, on my development. He talks about the difference between uh, Western medicine that uses, uh, you know, experiment, right? Shiyan, right, which is the Chinese word for experiment. And then Chinese medicine uses shi jian, right? And shi jian means uh, experience or, 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 or not experiment, but experiential or just practice, application, right? So basically, this is the, the main difference between these two. And so the difference is that it's a difference in, 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 in how you analyze the material that comes to you from, from the world. The, the, the world is constantly sending material to you if you're paying attention to it, once you tune into it, how do you process it? And you can process it through fenxi, right? Fenxi is what we call analysis, which is basically the word fenxi in Chinese. If you look at the, the word that they use for what we now call an, to analyze or analysis, fenxi, right? Uh, fenxi means basically to separate and cut it in pieces. Right? Smaller, 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 to the smallest piece, and then it's it's really nice. But then you're in a laboratory type of setting, right? You're just like you black. It's like a blank piece of paper, and there's only one piece of information, and that's the only thing you're looking at, and it's smallest, smallest particle possible, right? That's analysis, and and the Chinese, the old Chinese way is of course what we call zhonghe, right? And that's of course synthesis. Zhong means to bring things together. He means to fuse things. So instead of taking disparate pieces of information and putting them away from each other, out of context, so you can only look at that, those one, that one point, instead of that, you take as many variables as possible and you put it all in one big vat. And then you look at it like that. Now, of course, when you're looking at it like that, you're no longer going to be able to look at all of these individual things by themselves. But you're going to look at how they interact, how these individual pieces of information interact with each other. So instead of now being like this, oh, I'm looking at the one little thing, I'm going to take a step back and even close my eyes a little bit. And I'm just going to basically only work with the general impression that this collective of variables is producing. Right? So those are two very distinctly different ways of looking. Yeah? So the old Chinese way is the zhonghe way of thinking. It's all about, I look at a patient. For example, a patient comes into my room. This patient bombards me with an avalanche of tiny pieces of information. 
right? And my mom said, blah, 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 and this, and my doctor, and then this, day, and yesterday my toe was itching. And you know what? And you know, like all these pieces of information. So you can take one or two and really like hone in on them, and that tends to be Western medicine. Chief complaint, bang. Honing in on it, why? What cell is producing that symptom, that sensation? You know, rrr, myopic, right? right? Or you could turn it around and you can take all these pieces of information and it's kind of like a big radar screen. It's like kind of like looking at the night sky with, when there's a lot of stars, right? You look at all the pieces of information, every each piece of information is one star. And if you know how to look at the night sky, then as you, you, you look at the stars, you're like, tick, 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 tick. That's the big difference. Tick, 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 tick. That's the Ursa Major. Tick, tick. You know, that you connect the dots and you see a pattern where to the untrained eye, there was nothing but this pair of pieces of information. Right? So if you look at the night sky, and I'm not an astronomer, don't get me wrong, I talk about stars a tiny, tiny bit, but I, you, I couldn't tell north from south if you asked me to. But basically you've got these, all these dots in the night sky, right? And for the untrained eye, that's a bunch of stars, a bunch of dots of information basically, right? But suddenly, because you know about what you're looking for, and then this is suddenly a constellation. You're like, oh yeah, that's something, something constellation. And it means this, it means that, and it's in this part of the sky, and it's this, this degrees and that degree. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Why not? Because you weren't trained to look at it that way. And that's very important. So the ability to, so when I'm only looking at this, then I'm actually not looking at the other guys. Now, the other guys allow me to orientate myself. And because the other stars are present, let's say here you have the polar star over here, something like that, because these are present, I'm able to orientate myself, and I'm able to actually find the, this guy. But if I was not trained in looking at things that in this way, I would never have been able to find it. Now, I'm not going to just take one star and then, and then like zoom, 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 zoom in, and then look at, well, what does this star look like? How much light is it sending out? Let's, let's, let's measure the UV spectrum. Let's measure the, you know, we're not doing that. We're just, okay, this is just the overall impression we're getting. So Chinese medicine practice is basically this. You let all the information come to you, but your training in classical thinking is the filter that will diffuse the less pertinent and that will actually make the more pertinent, in this case, suddenly tick, 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 connect the dots. And that's how you work. Like when I'm sitting in clinic in front of a patient, I don't go in with this intense cerebral thing like, oh, you know what I mean? I don't do that. Like, okay, you know, they, they tell me a few lines and then I'll take their pulse. And in my mind, because my mind has been trained a certain way now, my mind connects the dots. But I'm not actively looking for the dots per se, only when I'm confused, I actively look for dots, right? But normally I rely on my training. And that's why this is a very slow growth process to become a classical practitioner because it's years and years of constantly uh, exposing yourself to this way of thinking, right? And then, you suddenly like ting, 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 and you connect these dots and you know exactly what it is. And in clinical practice, this is a prescription, a formula, <laughs> right? That's basically what it is. Patient comes in, I've got uh, sore throat, I've got uh, blurry vision, I've got uh, pain under the ribs, I've got this, I've got that. And then suddenly, tick, 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 you connect them, and you're like, aha, you have a Shao Tsai Hutang pattern going on. You know what I mean? So that's basically how, how, how it works. Right? But if you're going to look like, oh my god, why, why so much pain under the ribs, why under the ribs, you know, like that would be Western medicine, like, let's cut it open, let's cut your rib cage open and let's look at it, and you're like, oh man, I can't see that pain, where is the pain, show me the pain, right, like, that's why you, you, you try to grasp something that from, in, in, in Chinese medicine, you're not supposed to grasp at, at it that way. In the old way of Chinese medicine, you just kind of take it that easy. You just like, relax, bro. You know, just take it easy. <laughs> Taking a step back, you let the information come to you. And you, because your filter, your radar, because this is a radar screen, right? Your radar was calibrated just perfectly because you studied the classical way of thinking. You've measured yourself a new way of thinking, a new way of analyzing material, uh, massive amounts of information. Bah, 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 bah. You go to the Western doctor, they cannot explain why you have a sore throat and pain under your ribs on your gallbladder. That is, for, to them, not linked. Because the respirologist is going to say, well, you have a laryngitis. But then, 
he's not a digest he's not a he's not a gastroenterologist, so he's gonna say, Well, your gallbladder, I think that's just separate. I don't think that has anything to do with your, your, your sore throat. Right? And then the virologist says, Well, yeah, obviously it's a viral influenza, right? So that's the viro virologist is gonna talk about that. But he definitely was not gonna have any idea why your vision is suddenly blurred. You know what I mean? Because he says, Well, you just Go see the ophthalmologist because I don't have an idea, right? So Finchy, this is analysis. Like you, you take everything in this little box and you hone in on the box. So they could look at your eye, but they might not find any physical change in the eye. And even if they do, that might be a temporary physical change and it suddenly disappears at the same time that the gallbladder pain disappeared and the sore throat disappeared. And they're like, oh, um, well, great success. Right? You know what I mean? Like, we don't know why, but at least it went away, right? So, so the Chinese way, the old Chinese way of thinking is more of a synthesizing. You, are, you welcome massive amounts of information. You don't mind, but you don't have to intellectually, cerebrally hone in on every individual piece. You let it just go through you, right? And then a few will stick. And the few pieces that stick, the reason why they stick is because you're trained a certain way, right? But it's a semi-cerebral experience. You can't like mm, you go, go too much intensely brain on your patient because then you're going to get confused. And your formulas are actually, it's going to be a little crampy. It's going to be a little forced. 